Hello and welcome to Bread of Life, a daily devotional program which each week features a different area pastor. Our speaker for this week is Pastor Christian Cuthbert of Rockville. I grew up in Syracuse, New York as a rabid Red Sox fan. In my neighborhood, I was mocked and bullied consistently until my parents finally threw up their arms and asked, where can we send our son where he won't get beat up for being a Red Sox fan? Well, even though neither of my parents were Christian, they lied on the application to send me to the local Christian school. And this is what God used in my life to bring me to faith. So when I give my testimony, I can say that I've been saved by Jesus Christ and a little bit by the Red Sox. (laughs) But even after childhood bullying, I continued to suffer under the yoke of the curse of the Bambino. In 2003, When I was in seminary at Gordon-Conwell, I remember the laughter and ridicule after Aaron Boone hit his walk-off home run. I felt the weight of 86 years of coming so close, but still being so far away. I realized that in Connecticut, your loyalties might be divided. So for all the Yankee fans listening, I now come to 2004. That magical year where, like the Exodus, God delivered his people, overcoming the evil empire to win the World Series. Now, having said that, let's return to our verse from yesterday, Romans 6, 5. For if we have been united with him in a death like his, we will certainly also be united with him in a resurrection like his. When we are united to Christ, we become joined to all of Christ, not just the parts we prefer. But Paul tells us that we are truly united to all of Christ, that we are united to him in death and life. Because Jesus rose from death to life, we join him in life as well. So let me translate using my experience as a Red Sox fan. Because I suffered as a Red Sox fan my whole life, because I was booed at Yankee Stadium and had chicken wing bones thrown at me, I can truly be called a Red Sox fan. And because I am a true Red Sox fan, my rejoicing in 2004 was all the more glorious. My joy was made all the more complete in 2007, 2013, and 2018 because I was one of the kids who cried himself to bed in 1986. Because Jesus lives, we also can live. What does this mean? Most Christians understand this in terms of what happens when we die. Because Jesus rose from the dead, so also we will be raised from the dead. And that is absolutely true. But I feel this verse goes deeper than that. Jesus' resurrection gives you and I new life right now. Jesus' resurrection gives us hope for facing whatever it is that we wrestle with today. It's a reminder that our world is not the way it was supposed to be, and it's not the way that it will be. Jesus' resurrection gives us power for holy living. Because Jesus is medically and historically alive, we have an image to which we can be conformed. Because Jesus is alive, he has given us a spirit which comforts us, guides us, and empowers us. Because Jesus is alive, We have all the resources we need to live a holy life. Our union with Christ means that we have something better than anything we could ever ask or imagine. Better, I might add, than even the Red Sox. Christ himself. Through our union with Christ, we are united to him in his death and resurrection. Through our union with Christ, we can partake in the divine nature. And through our union with Christ, We can know God personally and intimately. I hope our brief survey of this idea of union with Christ has at least created a hunger for learning more about the idea. I hope we will forever change how you read those two little words in the New Testament, in Christ. And I pray that each of you will continue to be renewed in the image of Christ day by day. Thank you. You've been listening to Pastor Christian Cuthbert of Rockville, and this has been Bread of Life, a program to encourage you from God's Word.